The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is a first-person adventure that harkens back to the days of Myst and Riven. Many of the same elements that made those games unforgettable reside in this atmospheric mystery adventure. From the outset, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter lets you know you're on your own. There are no objectives flashing on screen, no reminders telling you where to go, no tutorial. The game does a fantastic job of helping you feel utterly alone within its gorgeously detailed world. There are acres and acres of lovingly crafted countryside for you to explore. In The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, ambience and environment are the stars of the show. Very few games have ever felt this immersive both visually and audibly. You play the role of Paul Prospero, a skilled investigator who's been summoned to Red Creek Valley by a young boy, Ethan Carter, to investigate strange events. As you guide Prospero, you will have access to his thoughts and expertise. You may even find that Mr. Prospero has a trick or two up his sleeve when it comes to connecting with the world around him. I remember feeling this in awe of a game world the first time I played Bioshock Infinite. That place was magical and powerful, right up until the point where it shoved the gun in my hand and forced me to shoot hundreds of nameless bad guys. Look, I'm not against shooters, I like shooters, but in that case, the mechanics detracted from the game's setting. I love The Vanishing of Ethan Carter because it never allows the mechanics to ruin the experience. Where you are and what you're doing are the same thing. The sound design is nearly flawless. In addition to enhancing immersion, music and audio cues are used to let the player know when they're on the right track. Accomplishing this with nothing but sound effects keeps the interface clean and again increases immersion. When the interface requires text to lead the player, it does so with very subtle, simple visuals. These text pop-ups are placed in the environment in such a way that they never feel like a heads-up display. Even the font used has a handwritten look that lets you almost feel these could be your own thoughts. The music is eerie and drives a sense of mystery and the feeling that something is definitely not right in this place. Don't confuse the vanishing of Ethan Carter with an open world game. Yes, you're technically allowed to roam freely, but this isn't Skyrim. There aren't dozens of side quests with hundreds of hours of gameplay. Instead, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter focuses on a single story. It took me about eight hours to make it through this game and uncover the mystery of what's really going on, but I spent a lot of time sightseeing, which is more than most people will, so you might be looking at closer to five or six hours. Upon arrival, Paul Prospero discovers a gruesome scene. But is it a murder? An accident? You'll need to search for clues and recreate the scene if you want to learn what's going on. Scenes like this make up the core gameplay in The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. The mechanics are mostly simple. Observe, click, observe some more. I won't go into the details of these events, but I will say that Paul Prospero definitely brings a unique skill set to these investigative moments. The challenge is not being quick enough or outsmarting an opponent, it's in understanding what you're seeing and what Paul Prospero brings to the table. Paying close attention to his insights will allow you to understand how to proceed. The game also features several puzzles that will require some critical thinking. They're not unfairly complicated and they always provide you with enough information to solve them. The way this information is provided is what's most impressive about these puzzles designs. Most people can create complicated puzzles with a complicated solution, but good puzzles, like good game design, reward the player for doing what feels right and learning from their mistakes by looking at the details. These puzzles offer subtle clues to let you know when you're on the right path and when you need to reevaluate your strategy. So, is there anything I didn't like about this game? I will say I was a little disappointed in the other character models and animations. They're not bad, and they certainly don't ruin the game, but they do stand in contrast with the lavishly detailed environments. At times, these character models almost seem cartoonish next to the world around them. I also experienced the occasional graphical hiccup. A few times the frame rate would drop for a moment or two. 
and every once in a while you might notice the seams in the environment. But the fact that there are no loading screens in the entire game more than make up for these tiny issues. If you allow yourself to be immersed in the vanishing of Ethan Carter, you will experience moments of surprise, moments that will shock, startle, and maybe even scare you. There were definitely a few times where I felt so impressed by my experience that I had to stop and soak in what I had just witnessed. Do yourself a favor and download this game.